Let's go see how these things are made. <laughs> Everybody. My name is Megan Stark. Welcome back to the channel. We have a very exciting video for you today. I've been a longtime fan and supporter of Thoroughgood Boots, longtime wearer. And today we're going to walk around the facility, show you how these boots are made, the very same Mokto boots that I'm wearing. And I'm excited to announce that Great Lake Supply Co., my company, is now a boot reseller. So you can go to greatlakesupplyco.com after you watch this video and secure a set of your own USA made boots made right here in Merrill, Wisconsin. this smell on the leather. So it all starts over here in cutting. Um, David's responsibility is to take a look at our hides that come in to make sure that they're of our quality and our standards before he sets up jobs for the cutters to cut. These here are current jobs that he has set up for our cutters to get ready to cut all the pieces out to make the shoes. Each horse is set up to do 144 pairs of shoes. So there should be enough leather on here to produce 12 cases of shoes. Now we step into our cutting area. So this is our cutting line here. Um, these individuals are very well resourced on where and how to cut a hide. Uh, we do have an example up there of a full hide on where portions of the shoes are cut out of that hide to get the best amount used out of that one hide. put staples inside that shoe. Trimmed off the excess leather that was left. There you go, Hunter. Comes over to our inseamer. This is a tough position. This is a really tough position. What the inseamer is doing is he is then taking that boot, pulling out all those tacks that we first started with back there. Pulls out all five tacks that are in the bottom of the shoe. He then takes that shoe and he's physically stitching on our welt. Yeah. Morgan does an exceptional job. He makes it look like a walk in the park. <laughs> Once it's done with Morgan, it then comes over to what we call our inseam trimmer. Our inseam trimmer is then taking the excess leather from what is left on the welt. Once he stitches on that welt, trimming that excess leather off to get a nice even surface. And he is then placing a shank in the bottom of the shoe. So that gives the stability so your shoe's not bendy. Yeah. We use here um, at Genesee in our welts, we use all fiberglass. That's what's placing glue in there, placing the fiberglass shank in, so it gives the stability of the boot. Then it comes over to what we call bottom fill welt cement. The bottom fill welt cementer's responsibility to put a nice portion of cork glue mixture in that boot. So that cork glue mixture oh, is nice and even. It's soft. Granola. <laughs> yes, it looks like granola. Yum. Um, they put that in there, flatten, smooth it out. That gives your added cushion. Yeah. Uh, then sense. it comes to our welt cement and we place a layer of welt cement along that welt. It then goes through our dryer, which our dryer is timed out to be about 15 to 20 minutes that those boots are in that dryer for that welt cement to heat up. And we come to your favorite part, toasting shoes. The toasting. <laughs> <laughs> so what Doug does is he's actually placing our midsole onto that boot. So he's activating that welt cement and he's also activating the cement on the midsole. So it's enough temperature heat to heat those two to bond them together. Medium rare. <laughs> and he then places it into his press to get that added pressure on there to make sure that the midsole is adhered to the boot, to the welt. Comes over here to Goodyear Stitching. This is another trying job. Um, definitely not an easy job to learn. He trims off all that excess midsole on there. He then comes over to his Goodyear Stitch Machine. Thank you. What he actually did was now he placed those white threads yeah. inside that well. Once it's done at that portion, it then comes down to what we call buff and chlorinate. Buff and chlorinate is preparing that midsole. 
So what they do with that is they take the boot then, open up the pores on that mid by roughing it up a little. Okay. That makes the chlorination kind of open those pores a little bit more to help our cement penetrate inside to the boot to get a, a good last bond. Yeah. The blue light, there's an active um, chemical in the chlorination that lights up the, the chlorination. So you can definitely see that you're getting the entire mid Yeah, yeah, like a little rave. Yep. Thank you, Troy. Then comes over here to our cementer. So what our cementer does is we wait 10 to 15 minutes for that chlorination to really stick inside that midsole. Um, and he is doing a thin layer of cement on our shoes. Once it's done at cementing, we have an hour dry time. So those cases have to sit and cure and dry for an hour. And everybody else is at lunch. <laughs> <laughs> He'll put that shoe up on the top, like we did over at midsole. Activate that cement, along with activating the cement on the sole as well. Press that sole on to make sure that the pattern of the sole is in the proper area. Place it in the press. Gives enough pressure to lock in that sole. Once that portion is done, then they run it through our roller to make sure to make sure to trim or to get a good bond between that welt and that sole before we go ahead and trim it off. OK, here. yeah, just kind of push it all together. Once it's done there, this is what we call our silpar or our trelly. That actually takes and it trims off any excess sole. So it has all this extra sole on here. Once it comes off that machine, you can kind of see it looks like Parmesan cheese. Yeah. <laughs> it trims it off and makes little ridges. Once it's done at that portion, we then go into scouring. The scour takes the sanding belt there that spins at a, a good speed, and he will actually smooth those ridges out on the sole. So now it's a nice, smooth, even sole, making sure that the toe is rounded the heel is rounded and we have a nice even surface. The packing end, what they're responsible for is making sure if there's any type of markings from when they marked for the stitching, there's any type of cement or anything like that on the boot, they are responsible for removing that before it gets out to the customer. So they take a, a cement roller to clean it all off, depending on the type of leather. Uh, depends on if it takes a conditioner or not. So our tobacco leather, which is our brown or orange leather, take a sponge and do a nice even coat of conditioner on it. That brings all the impurities that may have been from removing cement or marked lines all back. So the leather looks an even coated leather or Mason leather. Comes over to repair, repair, then takes that boot making sure that there are no sole separations, no problems with it, double checking everything, flaming any excess stitches and whatnot, making sure it's good to go to a customer and passes it on to our final inspector. Once it's done at that portion, we come over to our final spray lace and tag. We have our tobacco here and we have our crazy horse here. They get different types of finishing spray. Tobacco gets our leather protector spray uh, Crazy Horse gets a darkening oil. So it's a more, this leather is more of a, a velvety type of leather. So that darkening oil really seeps in and soaks into that boot. Once it's done, depending on the height of the boot, depends on what type of lace we put in. So these are technically considered our six inch boots. We do have eight inch boots. Our six inch get 54 inch laces and our eight inch boots get 60 inch laces. Every boot gets, obviously, their two pair of laces and each one gets a tag on the right boot of the thoroughbred. Comes over to our packing area. Packer's responsibility. Take that boot, bake the box. Place our resole card in. Piece of tissue paper. And we always pack our boots with our thorough good sign up. 
So the left one will go in first, making sure our thoroughgood sign is up. Fold the paper over. The right one goes in. Fold it over nicely. And we close our box. Beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me in this really amazing full circle moment. Back when I was making my first ever Thoroughgood boot video, I could only dream of building my business up to the point that I could be a dealer. I appreciate every bit of support and every order that has come through my website. I wouldn't be here without you guys. If you're ready to invest in some mock toe boots of your own, check out greatlakesupplyco.com to see the styles of Thoroughgood work boots we're offering so far. Thanks once again for joining me on this journey and until next time, ride safe. These kinds of boots are really fantastic. So I got a great experience with Thoroughgood. I chose them um, from the beginning because I knew it was gonna be a marker of quality. So thanks for joining me for this little boot discussion. I'm really passionate about shoes and I think we can blame my mother for that.